If you shot some epilogue footage with your new iPhone and you happen to have an iPad, you can actually edit and color grade them on there without a computer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it quickly and without paying for any software. This not only works for HEVC codec, but also Apple ProRes. The tool we're going to use today is DaVinci Resolve for iPad. We only need the free version. You don't have to pay for the studio version. After you get the app ready, the next thing we need to do is to transfer our epilog footage from the iPhone to the iPad. You can airdrop them here, and if they are pretty large, you can use an external drive. Because I filmed everything directly onto my portable SSD, now I just connect my SSD to my iPad. And DaVinci Resolve actually allows us to directly edit our footage from an external drive, so we don't need to import them to our iPad. All right, let's do this. Let me launch DaVinci Resolve. First, we need to go to the project settings and make sure everything is correct. It's over here. Over the timeline resolution, normally we want it to match our epilog footage. I filmed in 4K UHD, so I'm going to select UHD over here. Over the timeline frame rate, we will want it to match our footage as well. I filmed in 24, so I leave it like this. Hit save. By the way, I'm currently on the cut page, and it is the default page in Resolve for iPad. If you have already enabled all the hidden pages by keyboard shortcuts, for example, you have the edit page, you can do everything over there. We'll just use the cut page right now. Let's hit import media. And now I'll go to my external hard drive. Select them all. Okay, now they're in our media bin. To create a new timeline with them, I'll just long press the empty space, create new timeline using selected bin. Hit create. Okay, now we have a timeline with all those four clips. I don't really want to hear the audio today, so I'll just mute the whole track. Now we can start color grading them. Let's go to the color page. We have two ways to color those four clips. You can color them one by one, or you can just trade them as the whole thing and color the entire timeline. It's kind of like add a universal filter to your whole video. To save some time, let's do that today. I'm going to click this button. Right now, we are seeing the color node for the clip. We are going to switch to timeline. Now, what we are going to do over here are going to affect the entire timeline. The tool we are going to use to transfer our lock footage to Rec. 709 is Color Space Transform, aka CST. A common CST workflow is to create three serial nodes just like this. We are going to do some primary adjustments on the first node, put the color space transform over here, and then do some final touches over here. Let's set up the CST first. Go to Effects Library, search Color Space Transform, and add it onto the second node. Over the input color space, we are going to choose Apple Lock 2, which is what we filmed, and the input gamma will be Apple Lock. And as you can see, the footage now already looks normal. If we go through our four clips, they all kind of have a similar lighting and exposure situation. So I think I can just universally adjust the primary, like make it a little brighter, darker, dealing with contrast, something like that. And it's going to affect all the clips. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my first node. At this point, you can use whatever tools you like, no matter color views, curves, or something else. And the waveform over here is for reference. Normally, we kind of want to highlight to be closer to the top and the shadow to be closer to the bottom, but you don't really need to make everything that high. As long as you feel like the image looks balanced and not too dark, we'll be all right. So for me, I do feel like the shot is a little dark, so I raise my gain. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. And then I might want to lower down my shadow to compensate a little bit. So I put down my lift. Yeah, this actually looks good to me. And then I kind of want to raise the saturation to make it a little bit more colorful. So I will raise the saturation over here. This seems good to me. For saturation, you can actually check the vector scope. And normally we don't want this to go all over that far. So we are pretty safe. And if we go to our other clips, 
They all look pretty nice. But if at this point you feel like there are certain clips you are not happy with, you can switch back to clip. So for example, for this certain clip, maybe I want the mid-tone to be a little bit brighter. So over the node for this clip, I can raise my gamma. Just like this. And it's not going to affect any other clips. And then we can switch back to timeline. All right, let me reset this for real quick. Okay, so right now your Apple Lock footage already look normal. If you are happy with it, you can just export it as is. But if you want to stylize the footage a little bit, you can do it on the node after Color Space Transform. That's what we are going to do right now. For example, I always want to make my footage look a little bit cozy, so I want to give it a teal and orange color style. I'm going to use curves for this. I will go to Hue versus Hue. I want to push the blue sky toward teal. So I grab the blue color. Now the blue color is on my curve, and I'm going to drag it toward teal. This looks good to me. And then I want to push the green toward orange. Let me grab the green color and drag it toward orange, just like this. And now I kind of want to raise the saturation a little bit. I can do that as well. Okay, I'm happy with this. Let's go to check other clips. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with them as well. So after the CST, what we do over here is kind of like apply a stylized filter. It's basically the concept of creating your own LUT. And now maybe I even want to try more. I want to add a little veneer to my image. I can create another serial node. Go to Effects Panel, Search Veneer, and put it on here. I can adjust it based on my own liking. Yeah, I kind of like this. This is before, after. Now let's check out the whole video we just color grade. I'm pretty happy with it. For comparison, this is the Apple Lock footage without color grading. To export the video, we can just click the export over here. You can choose whatever codec you like. If you want to share it on the internet, H265 will be really nice. Hit export, select the location you like, hit save. Okay, it's done. Let's just go check out the file for real quick. Go to my files app. I export it to my external hard drive over here. Here you go. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or if there's anything you want to see next, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you find this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more about iPhone filmmaking and workflow, be sure to subscribe. Now check out some other videos of mine. I'm sure you'll be interested as well. Have a nice day.